Awesome. Thank you for jumping on, everyone. Um, my name is Meg from Redhead Wellness Century, and we are here to practice some delicious yin yoga, which is one of my, it is my favorite practice, 100%. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you jumping on. Um, all you'll need for your yin practice, of course, is just a few um, things. So I always recommend, especially for a home practice or if you're watching online or YouTube, making sure that you have a cushion or if you have a bolster, that's perfect. Um, you, you can use books as well. You don't have to use a yoga block. So books are a really great option um, to use. Um, just make sure you have um, possibly some sort of a strap. So I've got a band here, but you can use a dressing gown strap. You can use a jumper. A jumper is fine because it has like two um, the sleeves that you can hold onto and wrap around the foot. We're going to be getting into our hamstrings a little bit today. So either make sure you have something that you can wrap around your foot. As I said, a dressing gown strap is a really great idea. Um, or even just a jumper it would be perfect. Um, so we are going to start our yin yoga practice today um, onto our backs. So if you have a cushion, um, please pop it. Uh, feel free to pop it underneath your head. If you have a bolster, it's going to go long ways. If you don't have anything at all, that's okay. Just lie on your back. And we're going to situate the bolster or the cushion about midway up our back. Allow the soles of the feet to come together. And if you are lying on something, try to let your shoulders melt. The palms face up and open. And we're going to land our first shape here into reclined butterfly pose. So just let yourself surrender down onto whatever you have landed onto, whether it be the floor or whether it be a cushion or a bolster. And I want you to just let your femur bones become heavy to the thighs. Let the knees just fall down to the floor. And allow the hip bones to open. Gently allow the head to rest on the cushion or bolster behind you. And just in this first shape, just taking about 10 breaths just to arrive. Being that we're here for only 40 minutes, I'm not going to talk too much into this practice today, just to give you guys some space. So all I want you to do is focusing onto your breath as you land. So if at any moment you feel yourself getting caught up in thoughts that have happened before this moment or thoughts that are happening after this moment, acknowledge and understand that both of those thoughts are irrelevant. We have no control over either. So gently bring yourself back to here by focusing on your breath. Breathing in the words, I know I'm breathing in. And breathing out the words, I know I'm breathing out. And just allow yourself to just be in that. Noticing the rise and the fall of your belly with your breath. On every exhale, giving yourself permission just to surrender. Taking two more breaths here, everyone. So fully in, feel everything rise. And fully out, feel everything fall back down. Last breath in. 
and last breath out. Gently bringing your hands to the outside of your knees and slowly bringing them in. And then as you're here, just pushing the bolster or cushion out from underneath you and lying back down onto the ground into a rebound. So you might want to bend your knees and knock your knees together, coming into teepee pose, so an internal rotation of the hips. And just take five breaths here, being still. So in yin yoga, we get into the connective tissue and the fascia. And this sort of interweb um, that goes on underneath the layers of muscle can really only be accessed by yin yoga, by pausing, by being in a pose for a longer amount of time so that we start to relax and release tension uh, in all and around into this fascia and connective tissue. So from here, we're actually going to go straight into our hamstrings. So you'll need to find uh, something that you can wrap around your foot. We're going to place the left sole of the foot down on the ground and finding either a jumper or a dressing gown strap or a yoga strap, whatever you have, will be fine. Start to hook the something around the underside of your foot and keep your right knee bent. So we don't want to straighten the leg here. We want to have a soft bend into the right knee. And then we want to hold on to the strap just enough to feel um, a stretch in the back of the hamstring from the insertion point in the knee to the insertion point into the glutes. If that feels okay and there's no shaking, you can extend that bottom leg out long. But if this top leg is shaking, I 100% recommend staying here. Because yin yoga is not about really pulling and stretching, it's about finding what's called our edge. So we come to about 60%. So you go to that first point of sensation and never pass. And when we find that first point of sensation, that's where we stay. So shut down your eyes. Let your shoulders surrender to the ground. And try to soften here. So again, we're not stretching the muscle, we're trying to get underneath the muscle into that fascia and connective tissue. And under stress, of course, and tension, and just the Western world that we live in these days, you know, it's been proven by science that we humans can be in a stress state up to 150 times a day, which means that we're putting our bodies into fight, flight, or freeze, which means we lock up. Our digestion doesn't work the way it should. We feel tight and rigid and closed. We don't sleep very well because we're not functioning the way we're meant to. And things are not moving well in our bodies and can tend to get stuck. So when we come into yin, we have an opportunity to pause, to shift back into our parasympathetic nervous system, which is the only place where we can find rest and digest. So spending another 10 breaths here in this shape, your edge might have changed, but don't force the stretch. Notice any other areas in the body that might be holding tension. Try to let that go. Let's 
Take one more full breath in and a full breath out. So from here, we're going to release the strap slowly, place the right sole of the foot onto the left quadricep. So we're coming into reclined pigeon pose here, getting into our hips and our glute max. Flex the right foot if you have anything going on in the right knee, that will help the nerves and the joint. And then slowly start to lift up that bottom foot and either reach in and wrap your hands underneath the hamstring or reach through and interlace the hands and slowly let your head come back down to the floor. Recline pigeon pose. Close down your eyes and we'll be here for a couple of minutes. Again, just that gentle reminder that we're not after any pain. It should feel sensational, but pain and sharpness is not welcome. But uncomfortable is really good. And just let your eyes close down and just come into your breathing. Experiencing one more minute in this shape, everyone. So five to six more breaths. Try to breathe in for the count of four. Slight pause at the top. And a slow exhale for the count of four. Slight pause at the bottom. Taking one more inhale and a breath out. Slowly unravel, take your time, there's no rush. Bring both feet down to the floor, bring the arms out to a T. And then really, really gently start to tick tock your knees left to right. So do this ridiculously slow, take your time. Sometimes just giving ourselves the space in the quiet uh, is enough to interrupt the pattern of busyness, of doing. And we just lean into this moment of being here now. You know, committing this time to ourselves for a bit of self-care. And sometimes when we're quiet, the mind can go on a bit of a journey. And just understanding that whatever is going on in the thought, you are not your thoughts, you are the one experiencing the thought. You can always take a step back from the, the clutter of the mind and the, sort of, you know, the messiness as such. And just sit back and observe, become the watcher of your thought. Slowly bringing that other foot up, we're going to get into the hamstring of the other side. So we're lifting up the left leg and we're going to slowly make our way into our hamstring stretch on the other side. So please keep the right sole of the foot down the ground for now and keep a soft bend into that left knee. And then just finding where you feel your edge. Um, I've clearly got quite a difference between my right and left hamstrings today and that's perfectly normal. 
And then if that feels okay, you can start to extend that bottom leg out long, so long as that doesn't cause you any pain into the back. Um, and of course, when you're there, you're going to get a, a sensation and a stretch into your uh, psoas muscle and your hip flexor on the right as well. So closing down your eyes when you arrive. And then again, just allowing yourself to be right here. Really focusing on a really big, deep breath in. And then a steady, slow exhale to release and go out. Try to relax your shoulders, your face, your jaw. When we allow ourselves this space and time, of course we don't just soften into the body, we start to soften into the mind as well. Bringing in a sense of, of suppleness, a sense of ease. And a sense of calm, not just into the physical, but also the mental and emotional. Five more breaths here. It gives us more opportunity to, to yield and to pivot. If we need to, to change direction quickly, we learn to uh, respond rather than react. Every time we have something go on that pushes our buttons or triggers us, if we don't pause, we'll generally react the same as what we always do. So Yin teaches us to pause and take a breath and when we are triggered or something pushes our buttons, we have an opportunity to choose again in a way that's kind, compassionate and more towards our higher self. Take one more full breath in and then stay for the exhale. Very, very, very slowly come out of that, release the strap, bend the right knee, place the left sole of the foot onto that right quad, and either staying here or reaching through for a climb pigeon pose. So you may be noticing right now that um, you're having a physiological response 20 minutes in, where you might be feeling a bit more calmer, a bit more softer. You might have forgotten about your day. And you might have landed right here. And that's exactly what yin is meant to do. So again, just coming back to your breath, every inhale, breathe in, fill up. And you breathe out, so then to let go. Ten more breaths. Noticing if the mind gets distracted at any point. Notice if you're wondering how long we'll be here or whatever it is. And just paying attention that if that's where the thoughts are going, we're again, not practicing being here. So if at any time you find that mind starting to wander, come back to the words, I know I'm breathing in. And I know I'm breathing out. 
Take three more breaths here, everyone. Slowly starting to unravel. And just placing the soles of the feet down onto the ground and knocking the knees inwards this time back to that TP pose and internal rotation. And take five breaths here in a rebound. Just notice what you can feel. So from here, we're going to use our cushion or a yoga block or whatever we've got. Um, if you've got some thick books, then I encourage you to use, to use that. We're going to come into our supported bridge pose. So thick books are really good for this, um, but I know most of you on here do have a yoga block. Um, but as I said, just trying to find anything as a cushion can be good to slide underneath our sit bones. So we're going to place the soles of the feet down into the ground. And we're going to start to lift up and slide that block under the sacral area. So it's directly opposite our hip bones. So the, the block has three heights. So probably using the first or the second height, making sure that the block is not on our lumbar spine. That's really important. And then from here, I'm going to get you to bring your arms up above your head, kind of like a Y. So we're opening up into the, the shoulders, the armpits, the chest. Now, in this shape, I'm going to offer an extension of the legs, but if at all the extension of the legs uh, create pain into the lumbar spine, it doesn't feel right, then you'll come back to where we are right here. So if you'd like a little bit of a stretch into the hip flexors and the psoas muscle, you can start to extend one leg and then possibly two out long. But again, if that causes sharpness or pain and it doesn't feel right, please come back to where you were. May need to adjust a little bit just to find that sweet spot and then just allow yourselves to be. You'll be here for a couple of minutes. So of course, and I, I, I say this quite constantly with the movement videos we do, our hamstrings and our hip flexors, um, when we sit, we're putting them into a hinge movement with our, with our hips and it's not, it's a ball and socket. So what's happening is the, the muscles um, and the connective tissue and fascia are shortening with practice of sitting down. So it's really important for our spines that we lengthen them as much as possible. So that's where we're getting into here. Of course, that shortening of the muscles is going to cause tension and tightness into the lower and the mid back. Again, always choosing where you need to be. If those legs that extended doesn't work for you, just bring the soles and the feet back down. We've got about 10 more breaths here, everyone. Taking three more breaths where you are. So breathe in and breathe out. 
If your block was on a higher height, or if your legs were extended, slowly bring those legs back in, bend the knees, engage the core. We're just gonna bring the block down to the lowest height. So if you're already there, stay there. We're coming to dead bug pose. We're gonna lift up one leg, we're gonna lift up the other. So we should feel a sense of ease here. Again, you might need to adjust that block. There should be no effort with those feet above the hips. And then we're gonna bring our arms up so that the wrists and the shoulders are in alignment. And we're gonna keep our head neutral and close down our eyes. So coming to dead bug pose, allowing the blood to shift from the feet all the way down into our hips, our heart space, and of course our brain. Everything should feel quite heavy here. You might be experiencing a sense of tingling, which is perfect. A sense of lightness. Five more breaths, everyone. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. <laughs> just gently let yourself kind of be here. Kind of let the ankles just fall for a moment. Notice how you feel. And then slowly place the soles of the feet on the ground. Remove the block from underneath you. And then just roll on your side into a fetal position here. Yeah. Doesn't matter which side. Just curl into a little ball and take five breaths. You know, they say that what we practice grows stronger. If we continue to practice being busy, if we continue to practice negative self-talk, if we continue to practice constantly doing, if we continue to practice perfectionism and striving, then that continues to be our practice. So give yourself permission to receive. Give yourself permission to step back and be completely accepting of where we are without the need for more. And give yourself permission to say no, to look after your own self-care, to pause and to be still, and that will grow stronger. From our fetal position, Slowly coming onto our bellies, and we're going to find our way into a sphinx pose. If you have a bolster, I'm going to show a variation with this, which is a seal variation. For those of you who might be living in a tight spine today, make sure your feet are apart and you can rest your forehead on your fists. That's a really nice option. For traditional sphinx pose, we line up the, uh, the wrist with the elbow, creating an 11 with our arms, and we start to peel the shoulders back, so it's an external rotation to the shoulders. For anybody who wants a little bit more and has a bolster, then you don't need it, it's an option. It slides underneath the chest, and the hands go out in front, and we find a variation to seal pose. So we're here for about three minutes, so just let yourself surrender down into the pose, soften your shoulders and breathe. Breathe into the space of your throat and your heart and of course into your lumbar spine. For many years I suffered back pain um, and I would get so frustrated with it when it would flare up. Um, but I, I had the same reaction every time it flared. I would get angry and frustrated I would blame everything around me for my back pain. Um, our backs are linked into our sacral chakra, which is our emotional center. 
So when we have this pain um, in any areas of the body flare up, we have a choice to come into it compassionately. To actually look into the area and go, okay, thanks for showing up. What is it that I need to do to heal you? We have these beautiful teachers which are our own bodies. And when we dive a little deeper into the things that physically show up for us, there's most certainly an underlying emotional reason to that. So we have an opportunity to tune in and to ask, how can I help you? What do you need? Thank you for showing up. And we arrive in the space in a much more compassionate, kind and gentle space sending love and again that compassion to the area, allowing it to soften, allowing it to heal and allowing ourselves to feel. So we have approximately 10 to 12 more breaths in this shape. Just let yourself surrender. It is what it is. And we accept, acknowledge, and lean into that. We take off the pressure. So three more breaths here in your space bones. Maybe that heart opens a little bit more. You might even press up a little bit more in the seal if that feels okay. Take one more inhale. And then slowly removing any props. Just lying down onto your bellies and pores. Let your Surrender down, close down your eyes, and let everything just let go. Take a full breath in, and a full breath out. Just mindfully and slowly roll yourself onto your back, coming into out twists. So arms out to a T, the soles of the feet are on the ground, the knees are bent, and just finding an easy twist, letting the knees just flop to the left, and then letting the head turn to the right. If you would like a little bit more, you can tuck your left hip under, and you can let your right knee stack on top of your left or extend that leg out, but just taking the option that works for you. If you've got that top leg over, you get a little bit more into the outer hip. And just letting yourself surrender into this twist. We're just here for a minute on each side. Try to let your shoulder blades be down into the ground. Slowly engage your belly. Your next inhale brings you back up to center and pause. Take a full breath in and a full breath out and starting to move to the other side. So whichever variation you took, slowly move into that. We're here for six full breaths.
Take a full breath in and a full breath out. And mindfully and slowly try not to miss this part of the practice. Start to extend your legs out long, find your Shavasana. We'll be here for three minutes, that should take us to time. Let your shoulders roll away from your ears, your palms are open. You can slide a bolster underneath your knees if you wish and just let go. Take a full breath in, feel everything rise. And full breath out, just surrender to being still. You are now here. Gently starting to draw your attention back to the space around you. Noticing your fingers and your toes as you create a little bit of gentle movement. Maybe you move your neck side to side. As you start to breathe a little deeper, maybe those arms reach up above the head and reach long. And Feel free to squeeze the, the muscles a bit here and reawaken yourself. Give yourself a smile. And then roll to your favorite side. And take a moment here to have some gratitude and say thank you to your physical body for everything that it does for you. Allow yourself to feel gratitude, not just for your physical body now, but for the things that have happened in your day. Extend this gratitude outwards today, out from you to somebody else, so that they can then share that to others as well. When you feel ready, very gently press yourself up, just keep your eyes closed or downcast. And take a moment just to notice how you feel. Notice the state of the body, notice the state of the mind, and know that this is always here. Again, always remembering that what we practice grows stronger. So always tune into what it is that we are practicing and always know that we have the opportunity to choose again. Bring the thumbs to the third eye, honoring yourself, your practice and each other. From my heart to yours, namaste. Oh. Thank you so much, everyone. I always love teaching Yin. Uh, online. Um, it's really beautiful because I get to practice it too, so thank you so much. Um, you really feel a somatic change in the mind and the body after practicing yin, right? Um, so practice it more often, give back to yourselves, look after yourselves. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much everyone. Have yourselves the most beautiful day. Namaste.